All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, and welcome to my studio space. Um, as you can see here um, behind me, we've got uh, an unfinished uh, Salvador Dali that I'm currently working on. I'm actually working on a lot of things, um, but my name is Janelle Green, but I go by Jay. So um, most of my friends and whatnot, they call me Jay. Um, and welcome to Local Artists Live. And I want to give a shout out to um, obviously the Montgomery Museum of Fine Art and Miss Laura Boakman for inviting me to do this um, because I love art and I'm an artsy person. And um, yeah, <laughs> um, hey Laura. Um, and uh, but I also um, I also teach at Auburn University. I teach English. Um, my uh, focus was creative writing, specifically poetry. So. Um, you all get to hear some of my poetry today, um, and um, you're going to see a lot of different works that I've done and things that I actually, that I like to do. My style, honestly, I love abstract, but I also love really getting, you know, down with it with pencil. I'm actually sitting here right now coloring um, a picture of uh, Stevie Nicks because Fleetwood Mac is like one of my favorite, favorite groups. Um, of music, you know, that's what happens when you grow up with parents who love music from the 70s and 80s. So I'm actually working on that right now. Um, and I might show you that a little bit later if it gets finished um, right now. Right now we're like halfway there. So, you know, pretty much just working on her face at the, actually at this very moment. Um, and um, my, I guess you would say the, I like working with, I like working with paint, but my favorite is pastel pencil, uh, pastel pencils are really, really great for me. Um, it's a funny story. Actually, when I first started taking art classes at Auburn, my major was English. So when you have a, an English major, you can only take so many art classes. So I took as many as I could take um, that they would allow. And we actually started working with uh, charcoal. And I found out that charcoal was like one of my favorite things to work with because um, back then I didn't, I was still learning about art. So a lot of the different shades and values when you're working with just black and white, it's a lot easier to do stuff. Um, and so, um, I fell in love with charcoal just because there are certain things that you don't have to worry about. You don't have to worry about making the different tones, the different shades like you do with color. Um, but it just, it made everything easier. And then I actually started working with pastel pencils because they shade a lot like, um, charcoal. And so because of that, because of my first love for charcoal, I found pastel pencils and now I can't, and now I can't put them down. They're everywhere. And so, um, I work with primarily paint and, uh, pastel pencils. I'll show you in a bit. I've got a whole bunch of paintings here to show you. Um, I'll do, I do caricatures. Um, I do a little bit of realism. Um, I do portraits. And as you can see behind me, I like to keep things abstract. So Dali back there has got, um, you know, paint splatters everywhere because that's typically how I start um you know I have like a little I have a little system like a little you know when I when I'm getting started um I'll have I have a Basquiat here that's done in the same style that I'll show you in a second um but it's pretty much just it's all free-flowing it's all um you know everything with me always begins as abstract even if I'm going to do something or even, you know something real or if I'm going to you know paint a portrait or if I'm going to do how a house or a building Typically, if I'm going to paint it, the background has to begin abstract. Uh, I don't care where I am. I pretty much just have to start out abstract because I think it it's, it's very calming for me. Um, I know I, you know, it's, I don't know what it is. I, just, I like color. I like, um, I like the ability to be free. I think that comes across also in my writing um, and, you know, writing and art go hand in hand. Um, a lot of times, um, when I'm, when I'm writing, I'm thinking about certain things, you know, I'm, uh, going through in my head, the five senses. Um, I actually teach people, um, this phenomenon and I don't know if Laura wants to, she can write it in the comments down there, but I actually teach workshops on a phenomenon and I actually helped, um, with Laura, thanks to Laura, um, helping the kids way before COVID, um, helping the kids in Montgomery. Um, teach them about ekphrasis and what ekphrasis is. Um, and again, Laura can, can definitely spell that for you 
down in the <laughs> down in the comments. Um, what ekphrasis is, is um, basically taking one art form and using that art form to create another. And typically in writing, um, when we do that, we are often, we're looking at a work of art, whether that be a sculpture or a painting of some sort. And we write a poem based off of that piece of art. Now, um, because I'm a nerd, you know, and I like to take things further in grad school. I wrote a paper on musical ekphrasis because that, that can exist too. You can write a poem based off of the music that you hear. But for this sake, you know, we're doing, we're doing art. And so I often teach, I have a workshop coming up next month where I, where I will be teaching um, adults um, how to use, you know, poetry and art and how those things go together. Um, and uh, thank you, Laura. And um uh, it's, it's wonderful because I, I teach ekphrasis through the five senses. Um, that's the easiest way to understand it in terms of poetry, getting people to understand how you can, you know, look at something and, and, and write a poem. And don't get me wrong. Uh, it's easy for people to be able to look at something. I'm not going to say that it's, that that's difficult for viewers, but a lot of times, um, I like to take it a step further and, um, I throw in the five senses just because throwing in the five senses really kind of, it makes you think. So um, if we're looking at a painting, if we're looking at a sculpture, I'll, I will often ask, you know, okay, well, if we're looking at this, this painting and if there's a tree in this painting, it's a wonderful painting, it's a realism painting. If it's a, especially if it's, if we're looking at a Rembrandt painting, then we're looking at a whole bunch of detail. We're looking at a whole bunch of realism. So if we're looking at one of those paintings, um, if, if I'm teaching, you know, on ekphrasis, I'm going to ask the question, well, in using the five senses, well, what do you think um, this tree, you know, would sound like? What would it taste like? What would it smell like? Um, things of that nature. And when you do that, um, it really makes the writers have to think. And so after we we've come up with, after we've written down, you know, what this thing smells like, what it sounds like, what does it taste like, um, all of these things. When you look at it, what does it look, all of these things, what do you see, what do you hear, what do you, all of these things. Um, once they write down these adjectives to describe what they're seeing, and, that, and, and oftentimes with kids it's great because kids will just say the funniest things. You know, you, you're looking at a tree and a kid might, you know, say that a tree sounds loud just going off of the basis that, you know, when a tree falls, a tree's loud. So for a kid, you know, a tree might sound like, or, you know, during a thunderstorm, a kid might say, well, a tree sounds loud because I, I hear the wind because I'm hearing it going through the trees. So um, it's really, it's really uh, an interesting phenomenon to watch people and to watch kids also in general um, kind of just sit there and try to think, what does this thing sound like? Because we don't actually look at inanimate objects or things um, and ask ourselves, well, if I, if I was to write about that, what could I write about? Well, I could just write about this chair that I'm sitting in, right. But I could also write about it from a different angle. What does the chair feel like? What, would, what does this chair sound like? And that really gets, you know, that really gets them into that, that line of thought. And, I, and, and once you kind of go there, then you, you kind of change your perspective of poetry um, in general. And so that's what um, I work with. And a lot of the poems that you'll hear today I've got about four poems for you here. Um, you'll notice that there's that, that abstract quality. Now, Laura's going to be happy because a lot of the poems that I have um, today <laughs> are about flowers. I don't know how I did that. I, I do know how I did that. I did it on purpose. But anyway, um, so she'll be happy about that. And um, because it, uh, a lot of times I don't, I don't even realize that I, I tend to write a lot about nature because um, nature is abstract in itself. Um, I like to joke in my house that, um, God was the, or is the, um, greatest abstract artist ever, because if you pick up anything outside, you can pick up another thing just like it. And those two things will not look the same. And so a lot of times I find myself writing about flowers or about nature or about the wind or about space. Space is one of my favorite things. So I have a whole section, uh, and these poems that you're going to hear today actually come from a manuscript that I'm working on, um, right now. Um, so that's, you know, that I, I tend to, I tend to use my own little versions of ekphrasis while I'm doing my own work. Um, <laughs> and, um, so, um, there's that. And so I hope you, um, enjoy the, the poetry, um, that I'll share with you, but, um, it's just been, 
it's just been amazing this this last year I've really gotten into I really kind of bared down and really you know kind of gone inside myself and you know just trying to figure out the ways in which um I want to write what I what I want to write about um things of that nature um and um if you're hearing the scribbling that's that's just that's just me so don't worry about it um and you know put just being able to put both things together um and really, you know, see where I can take, you know, see where I can take things. Because the, the, a funny story is that actually, um, and I probably, I probably should have gotten out, gotten it out for you all. Um, I might get up and get that in a second. Um, I get my, I get my art talent from my father and my grandfather, um, who has a, I have a, one of his pastel paintings over there. And I don't know, maybe that's the reason why I subconsciously love pastel because granddaddy always, um, painted granddaddy always drew and and did his art in mostly pastel and and charcoal and i think that might be subconsciously why i have uh, before he died i I have a a, um a case of his color pencils and another one of his art cases and uh i'll move dolly out of the way in a second and show you um a horse that he did actually um in pastel pencils but i actually get my talent from him and my dad um dad draws too and so uh, most of my life has been just doodling and, um, you know, trying to be like my dad, um, which took a while because dad's really good at art and, um, uh, I'm really good at it too now, but it just, it, it, it took a while. And so I was always trying to, um, I think do what they did and draw. I, I used to always say, I want to draw like granddaddy and I want to do all this. And, um, you know, then life gets in the way I was an athlete and, you know, life gets in the way and you're doing other things and, you know, stuff is happening and you're not, you know, you're not paying attention. You don't get to draw, but it was, it was really kind of funny because as busy as I could be, uh, I would always draw. And so now I've kind of developed a style that neither one of them actually, um, neither one of them actually really do. The the one thing dad and I do have in common, we both do caricatures and I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you one of mine. It's the character. It's actually of Dr. Jay Gouge, um, that I did for him, um, during, uh, when COVID first started, I did a character of Jay Gouge. Um, I have others, but, um, I had to give them away cause they were obviously for specific reasons. Um, but me and dad both do caricatures. Um, dad had to do about 80 of them a couple of years ago. Um, for, uh, some people that he was in a fellowship with, he did about 80 caricatures of all of his, um, uh, fellow fellowship participants, if you will. And, um, so me and him both do that. We, I do caricatures. He does caricatures. We both do, um, dad does a really great job with paints and he's the, he's the reason why I actually, um, am better at painting per se. Um, I do a lot more abstract than he does, but in terms of just being comfortable with paint and being able to paint portraits, I never thought I'd be able to paint portraits cause that's just, I just, I was always the abstract kid. I was always that kid who just, you know, when I, I would paint something and it wouldn't look right. And I just, I would just say, you know what, I'm just going to do abstract. Cause I don't, obviously I'm not good at this, but then, you know, dad, you know, dads, they kind of sit you down and they, you know, they tell you you're great. You're going to do that. And, and that's, that's basically, and in a way, honestly, um, what happened and I just got better and better. And he sat me down and, you know, we just kind of went through some things and I have tons of books. I've got books from granddaddy. I've got books from my dad's been buying me art books. I mean, probably since I was about, honestly, I would say like four or five. And when he saw that I was drawing, he immediately started. I mean, we, they know us at J and M. I mean, honestly, they've known him anyway, because he played football, but he's been going to J and M getting art supplies forever. And so have I. So, um, I guess that's a, that's a little background. I mean, art basically runs in my um, family. It's, it's just amazing how you can tap into it. Cause I really didn't get to tap into it until I was older. I had always been a, a decent artist, but I really didn't tap into it until I got older. Um, and I started seeing things for myself. Cause you know, you really don't think that you're like, you really don't think that you're necessarily good, good at something and you know, until you see it. And for a while I didn't see it. Well, you know, now I, now I, now I see it. And so now, you know, drawing is not as it was drawing was never, bothersome it was never stressful or anything but you know you just know when you sit down and you're doing something you already know it's going to look right just because you've got tools you know you you remember certain things you've got certain things in muscle memory um and it just makes it easier but you have to get to that point um to to do so um and so 
that's just a little bit of a backstory um, of me and where I come from. So I guess um, I guess I can, I'll show you all um, some of my pieces. I'm going to save some of the paint pieces for last. Um, you all saw on the, um, on the, uh, what am I trying to say? You all saw on the IG posts, the steps. I do a lot of steps, but I'm going to, I'm going to save those for last. I have this thing with like steps and like ascension and like descension. And again, I'm poetic. So I'm looking at steps in a whole different way. Um, when I'm drawing, like when I'm painting them. Um, so I have this thing about like, you know, like steps and like, what do they really represent? And like. Is going down always bad, but, um, we'll start, uh, with these right here. So the, these are a couple, of um, let me get them for a second. These are a couple of, of drawings that I did. They actually got turned into prints. This first one, um, I'll just, I think I'm just going to hold these up. So this first one right here, this first drawing is actually a drawing of my grandmother's house. And I, uh, I was really excited. I actually got to draw it before I'm going to bring it closer. Um, I actually got to draw it. She got to see it, um, uh, before she died. This is my grandmother's house. Um, it's actually in a place right now, uh, where they're putting a whole bunch of apartments. So I got to draw it before, um, she had to move and, um, that street now, cause it's very close to campus. And that street now is pretty much all apartments and all of most of the houses on that street, you know, are full of kudzu and, and, and amazingly it's still there. Um, but it's just full of kudzu. And so this was one of the first, this was, this was when, I think this was when I really started coming into my art, honestly, in, it, in and of itself. Um, I started just, this is, this is me, you know, working with pastel pencils and, and color pencils in general and just, um, drawing and, you know, I think kind of getting myself used to pastel pencils to the point where I ended up, I ended up doing, um, a lot of houses for people. And I even, I did houses and sold prints at Dayspring. Dayspring ended up moving. If you know where Dayspring is in Auburn, um, Dayspring ended up moving. Um, so, uh, before they left, we always went to Dayspring. Dayspring was our local shop or still is cause it's in Opelika, but Dayspring was, um, our local shop where you could get all of your, organic and kind of whole food needs, supplements, things of that nature. They had been in the same spot for about 70 ish years. And so I ended up doing this one at day spring and my, and, um, um, they, 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 they sold the prints for me there. Um, they were very appreciative. I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, we, we missed day spring from being there. Um, day spring, you know, is fantastic. Um, and so, you know, there's that. And then, um, my friend, I, w I was just talking about J and M J and M. If you know, J and M J and M is immediately downtown, basically across the street from tumors. Um, and this is the, this is basically, oh my goodness. This is the, this is like the 1950 version of days. Uh, I mean, of, uh, J and M, uh, my friend actually, um, my, um, she was a teammate, uh, the, the, the guy who runs the shop is, um, actually her uncle. And so, um, I drew these and I made prints for all of them and I, and, um, they, they absolutely, they absolutely loved it, but you can just see from each picture, I'm getting more comfortable with the, the, the pastel pencils. I'm getting, you know, I'm really like playing with things and I have, um, I have houses that I've done for people. Um, obviously I don't have them here, but I have houses. Um, and, um, they just, I think, I think they really just helped set me up for being able to do or being able to work with pastel pencil. Um, it was one of those things. It wasn't not that it was easy to get used to, but, um, it was just doing the houses helped because there were certain points where you had to, where I had to use a, just a regular, a regular marker and things of that nature. So they, they helped in, in the midst of all of that, uh, in the midst of all that and working with pastel pencil, sometimes when I'm, when I just need to, and I don't want to, this, this is going to be, cause this, this has a lot on it, but in the midst of working with pastel pencils, sometimes I'll just do, I'll just do little doodles. And so in working with charcoal, I've already explained how I like to work with charcoal. This is just a doodle of Angela Davis. Um, you know, just, you know, young Angela Davis. Um, you know, just, I just like to work with, you know, things. I'm one of those people I like, I like really smooth shading. I like, 
you know, things of that nature. And so I just try to keep my hand and eye coordination and, you know, work with things, you know, do things like that, do quick little, little drawings. Um, Laura and the people at Art Talk always mess with me because I literally say all the time that I do quick little drawings and um, they mess with me because they're like quick. And I'm like, yeah, you know, quick, you know, quick little, quick little drawings, you know, because that was what my dad would do. My dad was a big sketcher. So dad would always tell me to practice and, you know, you know, do things quick, you know, and just see where you are and uh, do things of that nature. And um, in terms of I'm getting all of the, the pastel pencil type things out of the way. And so in terms of um, caricatures, this is President Jay Gouge. This is a caricature of him. And, you know, it is what it is. He loved it. Um, uh, he thought it was super, super funny. Um, he's been, we've known, we've known Dr. Gouge for a long time. He was there through my uh, undergrad and he was there through grad school for me too. So I got to graduate with him twice. Um, you know, my dad for a long time when dad was working at the university as well. So he just, he, we, he, he loved this one. I had a, it was a hoot doing it cause we knew he was going to laugh and he still messes me, with me till this day about it. Um, that I did that. Um, and then this next one, um, is one of my favorites. Um, this is, um, this is a, a, Pastel pencil, of course, of James Baldwin. I'm sorry about the glare there. Um, and um, looks more, looks way more uh, detailed than a doodle. Yeah, I know, I know, I, I know. I have to, I got to work on my uh, my language, I suppose, because a lot of these aren't doodles. But you know, for for me, you know, growing up with dad, it's you know, when you do certain things that are quick, you just you're like, okay, I'm gonna just gonna doodle this real quick, but. This is James Baldwin. Again, this is just me working with, um, you know, that pastel pencils and things of that nature. Um, and so, yeah, in terms of pastel pencils, it's one of my favorite. Laura hears me talk about it all the time. Um, and the, the last one I have is actually a print of a picture of my grandmother and grandfather when they were in like their twenties. This is a, this is a print. Um, the original, I think I, I get, yeah, I gave the original away, obviously. Um, but this is a print of, of granny and granddaddy and, uh, it's really special to my family because they're no longer with us. So, um, I, it was a must that I, that I, that I drew, um, that I, that I, I drew this one. Um, the family really loves this one. Um, this is another example of right here of me doing, uh, painted portraits. This is a, this is a portrait that I, I did for, a friend, um, it's her and her late husband, um, you know, just, just done in straight black and white. This was the first time I, I had painted in black and white when I did this one. So I was pretty stoked with this one because it was the very first time I had ever painted in black and white. Um, and I had a lot of, um, I had a lot of, dad gave me a lot of good compliments. Um, so that's always good. You know, when pops gives you, you know, compliments, especially when pops is the, you know, the original artiste as he likes to call himself. And then um, now we get to the fun stuff because now we get to, now you all get to see my abstract. But before, before that, this is, a, this is a Basquiat piece right here that I did. And it, and it, has, that, um, it has that abstract paint splatter background that I'm always talking about, like with Dali back there. Um, a lot of times when I'm, especially if I'm gonna paint an artist, like an actual artist, Basquiat being my literal favorite and not just because we both have dreads, okay? Um, but I like to throw that paint splatter in there. Um, this is one of those where I just had fun with it. Like it was honestly, this is one of my, this is one of my favorite, um, paintings to, to do. And again, as you can see back there, Dali back there, he's not finished. Um, so, um, I just, I go out and, and the paint splatter, I guess I should mention this. The paint splatter is actually, uh, spray paint. I worked with uh, spray paint for a while and I keep, I keep several cans of spray paint at all times, actually. Um, I have a whole rack, actually, of spray paint outside. I like working with spray paint. Um, and then these are, um, these are the steps. I like to do all types of sizes of steps. Um, I, I have this, I, I don't know, it's very poetic to me. And I mean, that makes sense, obviously. I have this thing for steps. Um, they, they just, I do these with just um, a palette knife. The backgrounds, um, I do actually use a brush for, um, but then the actual step work itself is just 
a palette knife. So um, I have fun with these. They're 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 all different sizes. Um, some of them are some of them are huge. I'll hold this back. Some some of them aren't. Um, but I have I have fun with the steps. Um, and it's crazy because the whole point, the whole reason that I got started with the steps was my dad had actually given me, um, this one kind of has like this fiery, I don't know, like, are we going up? You know, are we coming like out of hell? Are we going to hell? You know, it's just poetic. You, there's this, I don't know, there's this weird essence to this one that I, that I really, really, really like. Um, the, the, the steps actually came out of a weird, um, exercise. Um, my dad had actually given me a, a, um, a challenge to do. He was like, okay, I'm going to give you three colors. And obviously when you do art and you give, you give somebody colors, black and white don't count. And, um, he gave me three colors to do. And he was like, okay, I want you to, to create this abstract and, um, you're, but you're only going to be able to use three colors. And so I used the three colors and in, and while I was using the palette knife, they ended up making steps in themselves. And so I was like, and I don't have it anymore. I sold it. Um, they, they actually ended up making steps. And so I just kept going with that. And it's amazing how you can, um, do things. And then, uh, before I read these poems, just, uh, another, I, I also do other abstracts. These, these are some of my favorites. I actually took this over to a school that I was teaching at and the kids loved it because they, they all kept telling me that it, it looked like eagles and it, it looked like native American totem poles. So the kids, you know, anytime kids love anything, it's great, you know, totem pole, whatever you can, you, honey, you can make this be whatever you'd like. That's how I always teach abstract, but it's just funny when they're telling you about your work and you're like, Oh my God, yes, it can be what you like. Um, because I, I don't, you know, I don't have any, you know, anything against that. And then this one, um, this is, this was a funny one because if you look at it too long, it kind of looks like the state of Alabama, um, to a certain extent, it wasn't, that wasn't the goal at all. But, um, as you can see, my love for abstract is, um, is, is tenfold. I like to be as free in terms of my painting as I am with my poetry, which now you all get to listen to. Um, and I hope you enjoy. So the first, I'm probably, I'll probably read at least, uh, two of the flower poems. And then the very last poem, uh, Laura will get a kick out of because the very last poem was actually written off of something we talked about in art talk and it was because of Omar. Yes. All of these paintings are actually for sale. Everything that I'm showing today, everything is for sale. Um, but the, the very last poem, <laughs> very last poem is again about something. So this first poem is titled, give her her flowers, give her her flowers because they are her favorite and they are the one thing she can agree upon when discussing the delicacy of life or the way in which they photosynthesize the way they have a language of their own speaking through sound and color and vibe the same way she exists in floral purgatory waiting for the perfect flower to draw her out into the fields so she can witness herself being the flower that she is so that was give her her flowers and then because of a specific word in that poem we're going to read a poem titled floral purgatory i know laura is just eating this up right now so floral purgatory, what must it feel like to be confined to the slide under a microscope or stuck between the river and the sand, an invisible force field of evolution, a creation waiting to expand time circles around the planet to the tune of the growth cycles, the syncopated music, it all creates an invisible connection of sound. They are aware the audience awaits. And there's that one. And then the very last poem um, that I'm going to read again is, is actually, it's a, it's a longer one, but the idea came from an art talk that we were having. And when she, when Laura hears this word, she'll know it. So the, the title of this is actually called Virtualis Beatificus. So here we go. Wandering through the light, I questioned my happiness, tried to cut the tension with an actual knife because this feeling had become new and the visions were too vivid to handle. The spirits were confused and the gears inside my ribs had rusted with webs to keep them company. The spiders feeling more than me, being more than me, ruining me. But I kept wondering, 
through this illuminated wilderness just to see if all was true. Would I find the light out there or was it slowly starting to turn my gears from within? And if it was, if it truly was, then the answer to happiness remains constant. And I am beatific in simulation. So that was, um, that one's interesting because we actually got to talking about the, something in art talk and I can't remember what we were talking about, but Omar mentioned this word and I was like, man, it's a really, really, really great word. Um, the word was beatific. And, um, and I was like, man, that's just a fabulous word. That is just, that is just darling. And, um, so I, I took it and I, and I wrote a poem, um, for it. Um, but, um, in terms of, first of all, thank you all for being here. Um, you all are fantastic. You're all wonderful. Um, but in terms of my art for sale, you all can contact me, uh, through Facebook, um, and my Facebook, which I will have to pull up for you, but, um, my name on Facebook is Janelle. So that's J A N E L L E, um, J Verde green. So just, you know, honestly, uh, if Laura could type that down in the comment section for me. So, um, my Facebook it's a, it's, it's a weird one. Not, not, it's not too weird. It's just the middle. So my, it's my name and then it's Janelle J Verde green. And for the most part, uh, people contact me through Facebook or they contact me through Instagram. Um, and because every piece that, that you've all seen here is actually for sale. Um, uh, thank you, Laura, for inviting me on and, uh, for doing this. And, um, I hope that, that you all enjoy it. I hope that you all, you know, will take a step out and maybe write some poetry, maybe go look at an art piece that you've done yourself and, you know, try to go back to that time where you were doing it and you come up with, you know, the words to say. Um, and, um, I hope that, you know, we all can learn to live abstractly at some point and just go with everything. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you, Laura, for linking that. That is my, that is my Facebook name down at the bottom, Janelle J, J Verde Green right there for Facebook. Please contact me at any time. All of these pieces are for sale and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys. Yep. <laughs>